Dr. Salzberg, David, is a physicist. He is uh, smarter than I am. But truthfully, I, I don't know what he does. How was your day? Well, you know, I'm a physicist, so I thought about stuff. <laughs> He's not only doing business for the world and for the science community, he's doing business for our show. He double checks all the science and, uh, you know, and is also helpful in some of the jargon for us. The right paradigm shifting reinterpretation of the universe. Loop quantum gravity better unites quantum mechanics with general relativity than does string theory. Free electron laser for my x-ray diffraction experiment. The humorous footnote where I illustrate mirror symmetry by likening it to the Flash playing tennis with himself. The locus of my identity is totally exterior to me. I'm actually a particle physicist by training, but lately I've uh, been lured a little more into astrophysics and astronomy, and so, uh, those of us who find ourselves in this situation are called particle astrophysicists. I got a phone call from a friend of mine who is a, uh, an astrophysicist now at University of Hawaii. He was asked a few questions by these people who were doing a, a sitcom about physicists and they needed to find a physicist. He worked by email with us and then once it was going to series we realized now we're going to need somebody who's actually going to be able to come down and, and help. So we asked him for recommendation and we got to Professor Salzberg and we contacted him and said, do you have maybe a, a grad student or someone who could come and, and help us? And he said, oh, could I do it? <laughs> okay. We knew we were out of our depth. If we were going to write about geniuses, we better damn well have one around. My favorite moment, though, is always when we'd get to the physics part of the script and we'd sit there and we'd stare at the screen and, and, and I'm trying to figure it out. And Bill would always say, we could sit here forever, Chuck. We're not going to become physicists and write this. <laughs> so we had no idea what we were doing. This is the important scientific question that has to be... Uh, could we ask David to explain this? Well, that's interesting because if, it's, if that ties in... That's, that is renormalization. Why not? One of the things I always look forward to do with the show is I get the scripts from uh, Chuck and Bill and the other writers. And often there's little brackets and it says science to come about some new project that Leonard's working on, for example. I think you'll find my work pretty interesting. I'm attempting to replicate the dark matter signal found in sodium iodide crystals by the Italians. So no original research? No. <laughs> well, what's the point of my seeing it? I could just read the paper the Italians wrote. In those small places, I kind of have some free reign. And uh, I pitch a few ideas to them and see, see which ones they, they like. And uh, often it's, it's something that you can uh, Google about or check on Wikipedia and see that these are often uh, current topics. My flash drive has my paper on astrophysical probes of M-theory effects in the early universe that I was going to give to George Smoot at the conference. Well, why do you have to give your paper to George Smoot? It's brilliant. He needs to read it. <laughs> the most fantastic thing about him, other than the fact that he's doing fact-checking, is the fact that if there's a problem with it, it's on him. He also spends time on the set, the whiteboards that are on, on the set here in Leonard and Sheldon's apartment, and he makes sure they're right. It's fun when we can tie it into the episode. Professor George Smoot was here, and uh, he was involved in some of the uh, measurements of the cosmic microwave background radiation, and won the Nobel Prize. And so I had a diagram of the apparatus the team used on the Kobe satellite, and uh, we put that on the board, and, uh, and he saw it, and I think he liked it. This is actually related to uh, one of the jokes in last week's episode. This physicist goes into an ice cream parlor every week and orders an ice cream sundae for himself and then offers one to the empty stool sitting next to him. So the owner finally asks him what he's doing. The man says quantum mechanics teaches us that it is possible for the matter above this stool to spontaneously turn into a beautiful woman who might accept my offer and fall in love with me. The owner then says, well, lots of single beautiful women come in here every day. Why don't you buy an ice cream for one of them and they might fall in love with you? And the physicist says, yeah, but what are the odds of that happening? <laughs> A little insulting, don't you think? And so we have here is uh, a, the basic diagram of quantum tunneling, uh, which would be basically what's the physics behind that joke. We trust David Salzberg a lot. He may be, you know, co completely conning us, and this is all nonsense, so we, we wouldn't know. I especially liked your paper on grand unification using string network condensates, and was wondering how you determined that three-dimensional string nets provided a unified picture of fermions and gauge bosons. I also had once had a chance to play uh, a very inside joke. I had an honors physics class, and they came to the audience to watch the show. They were fans. And on the whiteboards, I had the answers to the exam they just took. How would I know? I'm not even
even sure I get it. <laughs> They are a group of people who are working to understand the, the fabric of the universe, the people who sort of look into the eye of God every day as a job, and what an amazing group of people they are. And we made the decision to make them physicists. Uh, whatever small contribution I have is maybe what particular experiment they're doing uh, that week or that season, or, uh, or what, you know, what particular little objects Raj might be looking at. Uh, so in the details, I get a chance to, to contribute. You know, I gotta ask, why didn't you just get a license at 16 like everybody else? I was otherwise engaged. Doing what? Examining perturbative amplitudes in N equals four supersymmetric theories, leading to a re-examination of the ultraviolet properties of multi-loop N equals eight supergravity using modern twist door theory. <laughs> So Sheldon is a theoretical physicist, and people like him are uh, probably best described as intellectual descendants of people like Einstein or Niels Bohr. Oh, there's my missing neutrino. You were hiding from me as an unbalanced charge, weren't you, you little subatomic dickens? They're trying to make a mathematical description of everything in the universe, a, sm a small order. It takes a certain amount of, uh, of arrogance to think one can do it, but there's been quite a lot of success in that field, too. Yeah, we're examining the radiation levels of photomultiplier tubes for a new dark matter detector. Uh, sweetie, sweetie, Dave was talking. <laughs> Most recently, the, the problem that Leonard's been working on is uh, a problem uh, called what is the dark matter in the universe? A lot of indirect measurements show us that 90% uh, of the universe, 90% of the mass in the universe is made of something that we don't know what it is. Um, and so there are lots of experiments going on right now of people trying to detect what is this matter moving around in the galaxy? What is it made of? So what's your news? Remember that little planetary object I spotted beyond the Kuiper belt? Oh yeah, 2008 NQ sub 17. Or as I called it, Planet Bollywood. <laughs> so Raj is an astronomer or an astrophysicist? Anything? Actually, I was just checking my email. <laughs> and his research has him uh, studying objects orbiting the sun, but in orbits very far from ours. And uh, these are something that we, we would have called planets uh, back in the day. But ever since Pluto was demoted, they're now called dwarf planets or, or something smaller. Oh, thank God you're here. What's the emergency? I got the Mars rover stuck in a ditch. <laughs> Where? On a dusty highway just outside Bakersfield. Where do you think? On Mars! Howard is actually not one of the scientists. Howard is uh, an engineer. Dr. Gablehauser. Dr. Cooper Pauly. Dr. Gablehauser. Dr. Hofstadter. Dr. Gablehauser. Dr. Cooper. Dr. Gablehauser. Mr. Wolowitz. <laughs> so of the f of the four, he is the only one that doesn't have a PhD, which is something which they've they've pointed out to him, and uh, why Sheldon called him one of the Oompa Loompas of science. A loop counter, and an escape to the least objectionable activity. Howard, that's brilliant. <laughs> I'm surprised you saw that. <laughs> Gee. Why can't Sheldon make friends? When I first got involved in the show, there was only maybe one episode out there, just the pilot. Um, a lot of physicists uh, that approached me uh, were a little bit nervous, and uh, they were they were a little bit afraid that physicists would be uh, would be portrayed maybe as geeks with a kind of mean spirit. Anecdotal evidence suggests that in a game of rock, paper, scissors, players familiar with each other will tie 75 to 80% of the time due to the limited number of outcomes. I suggest rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. And now it, it's completely changed. Now that it's been second season, um, I get Nothing but positive uh, feedback. I mean, these are smart people. These are gen I mean, we call them nerds because we don't get it. They're not nerds, they're geniuses who just don't process things the way that normal people do. It's fine with you if I'm not smart. Absolutely. <laughs> the response has been overwhelmingly positive by the scientists who love the show, and their husbands and wives, I think, love the show even more. What do you want me to do? Smile. We had an article written about us in Science Magazine, North America's leading journal of things scientific. And uh, a lot more exciting than, than Variety. Who would think you'd see an article about a situation comedy in a, in a physics magazine? Comedy is as old as science. It's really interesting that every time I try to think of something funny, there's all sorts of very scientific reasons why, why it won't work out that the writers have taught me.